terima pelawaan daripada FCS untuk menjalankan uh, sharing session for promoting postgraduate uh, research masters and PhD um, nama saya Aman Mama Esam bin Mamat daripada uh, Institut Pengajar Siswa uh, pagi ini penceramah kita Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and a very good morning everyone can you hear me first i would like to test Yes, yes. Boleh dengar, Prof. Ya. Yeah. Boleh dengar? Okey tak? Hello? Alright. Boleh dengar, Prof? Is the line okay? Yep. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Prof. Madia, Dr. Aman. Ya. Yeah. Okay, I'll start my uh, little experience yeah. of supervising uh, PhD or postgraduate student in UITM. But before that, uh, I think we should start our session today with bacaan surah Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate and thanks Ipsis, um, Director, Professor Dr. Haslinda Yusof, Professor Madia Dr. Aman Mamaisan for organizing this uh, webinar series to promote uh, postgraduate post research among uh, scholars in UITM. Okay. Um, I was given a task to actually talk about upskilling uh, postgraduate supervision, something like that. But uh, I think the title, the main title on the webinar series is promoting postgraduate post research. Uh, may I test, can you see my slide? Yeah, boleh nampak, Prof. Boleh. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, before I start, uh, I would like to uh, introduce a bit of myself. I am uh, Jamalia Said. I'm attached to Accounting Research Institute, High Sui in uh, UITM, and one and the only High Sui in UITM. I've been with UITM since 1991, and I started my career in, in 1991, the IPEC, which is uh, previously known as uh, Intech. After that, I went to, uh, it's, uh, now is the name is ISAP. It used to be, uh, every, every now and then they change the name, now the latest one is ISAP. After that, I moved on to Faculty of Accountancy. After that, then now I'm attached to REAP. Okay, the title of my presentation is Promoting Postgraduate Supervision. Uh, basically, these are my presentation outline. I'm going to talk about why are we not ideal supervisors? Then, what should be an effective supervisors and the responsibility of supervisors postgraduate program at UITM. And actually, um, I'm very sure uh, you are all aware of our postgraduate program, the duration, the description, the detail, but somehow I'll touch a bit on this. And uh, at the end, um, I'll share with you my research finding on actually the relationship between supervisors and supervisees. How do the, our supervisees perceive us as supervisor and how actually we supervisor perceive our students on the their quality of work on their commitment to their PhD. Okay, first of all, I'm going to start with the why are we not ideal supervisors? Okay, uh, I I don't have to list actually our role as lecturer in UITM, and you yourself actually can add more to this list. We are actually assigned to teach twelve hours, nine hours. Some of you may have to teach 15 hours, right? And of course, as lecturer, we have to prepare exam question. 
uh, mark exam scripts, key in the mark, right? Attending meeting, not to mention meeting, sometime in one whole day we attend meeting, workshop, seminar. Of course, we do have consultancy project to be completed. And writing is, of course, things that we cannot avoid. Writing reports, student report, and also our uh, students' rep, uh, thesis we have to examine. And on top of that, we are assigned with other faculty duties such as like uh, organizing conference training and also attending conference training. So if you can list, uh, if I were to offer you to list more tasks that we as, uh, as a lecturer doing, I believe your list is going to be very long. But believe me, we have no choice. Okay, this one cannot be an excuse. And this is only part of the list. If I were to add on for the ladies, uh, what I mean is a lecturer, lady, like uh, a uh, woman lecturer, I would say, yeah? our task is even, I, I think it's going to be double because we are normally um, in charge of our family, the kids. Look at this picture. So we are driver sometimes, counselor, and we are mother-in-law, we are mothers, we are sisters, we are daughter-in-law, and our job is actually, uh, I would say, non-stop, is even harder. But this cannot be an excuse for us to be a, a ideal supervisor. So what should be the ideal supervisor? So I show some photos or a cartoon on what is not an ideal supervisor. So an ideal supervisor should be an opposite of this. So and I truly believe each of us here, we have gone through the process of doing PhD and we learn a lot from our supervisors. Some of our supervisors attitude or reaction or behavior we don't like we don't like it and in that case i think we now we are supervisor we should not actually repeat the mistake by our supervisor so we should actually uh, repeat what is the right thing and try to um, avoid things that we don't like uh, as I mentioned this, actually, personally, when I asked my student recently, currently I am having 13 PhD students. I We have WhatsApp group. I asked them, what is the things that you don't like me to do during our meeting? And I like the finding. I mean, it's not the finding. I like uh, when the students say a few points that I actually did it without me realizing it. Number one is answer phone call. Because I am I always meet my student at the office. And of course, the, when there is official phone call, I I am obliged to answer because I'm scared if the phone is the phone call is an important thing that I need to answer right away. So actually, these are among the things we as a supervisor should not do. So from that moment onward, I try to have meeting with students outside my office, meaning I'll go to meeting room or any small um, space or lab that I can meet the student without uh, being disturbed by phone call. That is number one, I think they mentioned. Number two is to hope to check message from handphone. Also, the student actually do not like that actually because when we talk to them they want us to put 100 percent attention to the issue that we are actually discussing so now uh, i like this cartoon when they actually say that uh, we as a supervisor please do not look at our students as a brain and stick meaning we should understand they are actually human they have feeling, they have hope, they have dreams, they have aspiration. So before we meet the student, maybe we should ask things that 
are very personal. For example, uh, how's your kids, how your spouse, how's your work, make them uh, comfortable. And of course, when we do that, they know that we care for them, not only care for their thesis or academic uh, writing part, but also they are actually, we, are, we have to prove to them the, that we know they are human, that they have feeling, so we treat them like one, okay? So the other cartoon is like showing us what is expected from a supervisor. They say that it looks like, as I mentioned earlier, supervisors are busy people. So this, uh, this supervisor said, I'm coordinating five different research and development projects. But sure, I can spare one minute for you. So imagine if you, as, if we as a supervisor, we are able only to allocate a few seconds, a few minutes for the student that is not fair, especially when the student is just enrolled, right? When they just enroll, normally we spend minimum of two hours to get their topic refined, to get their theory, um, uh, suit their title and the setting of the study. So having to meet students for a few minutes especially on um, at the earliest stage of the PhD is not actually a good uh, or ideal supervisor. So this is, these are another cartoons that um, I extract from PhD comics. So in this cartoon, see, the supervisors or the professor do not actually show um, uh, what, eagerness when the students want to see them. So they can say, they, I think the supervisor said, when I could actually work without all this, this um, student in interrupting me. So you are as, as if you are looking for a time then when actually nobody knock your door, disturb you. So I think as supervisor, as professor, we should actually show our, what you call that, eh? happiness, our smile when students come to see us despite our busy schedule. That is things that we should not uh, overlook. Okay. And the next one, this is actually common also. You realize or not, we make appointment. Uh, we, uh, when the student make appointment, we agree. And suddenly you notice our over, uh, appointment with the students overlap. See what happened to this group of students? Uh, see, they want to see the same supervisor exactly at the same time at the same spot. I think this is possible only if, if the students are at the same pace, meaning they just enroll. So we need to explain to them how to find, uh, how to find researchable topic or how to write a problem statement or how to identify problem statement. They are at the same pace so that our explanation is going to be in, in general. Then that is possible to meet all of them at the same time. Otherwise, I think we have to schedule different time for different students. And in this case, I would I would believe that the student is so excited to see the supervisor. Uh, they have been waiting for this moment for days or weeks. Suddenly, when the student come to our office, they notice that they, they are actually having other students to meet the same supervisor, which is not fair to the student. And this is another one. Uh, when we respond to our student um, write up, for example, I like this cartoon. They say that I made a few tweaks to the draft paper you sent me. Okay, we proudly send say to our student, who oh, already made your paper that you sent me last week. Oh, then the student realized what happened. We rewrite the whole thing all over again because sometimes editing the student work is so time consuming, is so difficult, we might as well rewrite the whole thing. So, uh, so when the student says that, you rewrite the whole thing. So we just say that it is easier for me to rewrite it than to point out all the things that you did wrong. I call it learning by demonstration. So what are we, what are you demonstrating? Oh, I'm demonstrating that you are a bad writer. We don't say that to our student, right? So this is thing that we need to do. I think doing um, using track changes in editing our students' work is going to be very good 
because from there they know where are their mistakes. Okay, and I think writing for the student is not actually training to be training a student to be independent uh, researcher after they graduate. And this is another thing that we might ov um, overlook when the student actually spends so much time to write to us to ask something. So what happened to the professor? The professor took only 1.3 seconds to answer the student email, whereas the student spent 1.3 days to create a sentence to explain to us, to ask our opinion. See what we say? Yes. Do it. See, attach. No. That is the way we respond to our student. Try, try to make a longest uh, sentence so that they know that we care, actually. Okay, so what are we why are we not ideal supervisor so on top of those opposite or negative thing this is what we need to do uh, we are not aware of their feeling we are we have inadequate or negligent in supervision okay things that we shouldn't do inadequate or negligent supervision meaning there's uh, a lot of things that we can actually mentioned here first actually we have to guide the student from the beginning from the topic so we ourselves must equip our knowledge we have to lead a research so that actually we can uh what you call that eh? our knowledge keep a growth rather than we stop when we finish our phd maybe 10 15 years back so of course knowledge skill it's very important for us to to do what we said to share or to extend that to our PhD student. Then having too few meetings uh, will also create problem because if we look at uh, I would say average time spent, especially for student who just enroll meetings with students at least twice a month is actually a minimum uh, number but in fact if we realize okay i think uh, when i did my phd one of my supervisors are from international uh, from australia so they expect a weekly meeting during the first four months of enrollment so they believe after four months, we are okay with the title, with the objective, then they reduce the meeting into twice a week. And I think after the DRP, when you when our student pass the DRP, then the meeting is um, reducing to once a month, or maybe after that, when the that student busy doing data collection at that point of time, we can actually let go the student for two months or meet the student only once uh, every two months okay so next is giving given too little direction failure to return work properly this is very obvious and actually as i mentioned i think we have a lot of reason not to answer their or respond to their right up right away because sometimes we feel that if we edit their work now their work is still at very uh, I would say very uh, early stage and it's going to be like waste our time because we believe later on the student is able to do better and at that time only we are going to replace but that is not a great thing we don't actually show to the student that we are interested in reading their uh, writing I think if they give what you need to do do not read line by line word by word but at least you touch paragraph by paragraph for example when they are first doing their proposal, I'm sure the writing is not that good at that point in time. You just handle paragraph one. Oh, this paragraph is a bit too, away, too far away from your current topic. Can you straight away focus? So you don't have to go line by line, correct the English the sentence. That is going to be a wasting of time because what you need to know at the earliest, what you need to guide for, um, at the early stage is only whether the student um, understand how to write uh, academic is, uh, writing. Of course, um, one of the way to improve our experience skill, we have to lead a research. 
do not only park apa, our name in the students research. So we have to lead one, student need to lead one, then only we can get more experience or getting new top uh, ideas on uh, to get more um, uh, what you call that to add more contribution to the knowledge for the student thesis and absent from the department is not something that is no no but i i remember during my phd i have a friend actually she doesn't know that the her supervisor was like taking sabbatical leave so that is not a very good thing to do so hopefully it does not happen uh, among us in UITM. If you are, happen to take leave for whatever reason, please plan in uh, advance with the student. How are you going to communicate with them? Okay. So what char characteristics should a supervisor possess? Is actually opposite of all the cartoon just now. So whatever the cartoon say is all negative. So please avoid that. And of course, we have to uh, do like what is was uh, mentioned earlier, we have to have um, experience, we have to show our that we care to our student, then we have to support. When we say care, we, we have to go beyond academic, beyond thesis. We have to go up to their family, actually. Uh, maybe I think uh, Dr. Aman and this is our commitment at ARI to our student is sometimes involve financial, involve family. So that is to show that actually uh, what I want to say is actually PhD is not, not about the thesis alone because the background or the supporting system, the surrounding area of our students will affect whether they are able to do their thesis um, or otherwise. Okay, basically this one I, I read from a book by Richard James. Richards actually uh, highlighted 11 practices of effective postgraduate. He actually uh, classified the practices into three stages, foundation, momentum, and final. Foundation is like your, uh, before you embark or before you decide to take the student as your supervisor. So what you should do, okay? So at this point, uh, you should make sure the relationship is great. When they come to you, actually, you you should have the chemical. Eh? Like, oh, I think I can work well with this. Oh, I there, there is no way I can work with this student. Uh, so actually, that chemical is important. I'll show you later how actually the feeling between supervisor and supervisor is actually mutual. If you like them, they like you and vice versa, actually. Okay. So you need to get to know the student carefully, assess the need, ask them, where are you staying? Are you going to do full-time, part-time? Where are you working? If you are working, how are you going to commit with your thesis? So get this point earlier during your first meeting before you decided to take the student. Otherwise, if you think you are not able to help the student till they graduate, may as well we reject them uh, 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 at the early stage rather than they waste time doing PhD, then halfway we realize that <clears throat> we are not able to help them to graduate. So, uh, make this, uh, establish this relationship uh, during the first day of the meeting. Okay, then uh, next, this is our, I would say during your semester one until the student complete. This is the, the process of doing PhD. At this point, you have to encourage students to write a lot, attend a lot of conference, and uh, thank you to IPSIS. I think they have allocation for students to attend or present paper in the conference. Uh, so make them lead something. Do not just focus on the PhD. When your faculty or your institute having to conduct conference, involve them. Ask them to not only to present, but ask them to in charge of inviting speakers, for example become the moderator of the session because they are PhD student. At the end of the day, when they graduate, we expect they are very independent uh, researcher, very independent uh, lecturer, so must train during these three years uh, period. And uh, maybe I realized that recently when Ipsis uh, asked me to join one of the workshops on how to select or the to develop a criteria for best student, I noticed 
some or most of the criteria, of course this is important, but some of the criteria says that the involvement of student in leading or become the leader of a project. Okay, so make the student involved in many projects so that there is potential uh, chance for the student, there is chance for student to get that award, I think. But the award is only once, uh, no, one for every convocation. Okay, and only one student will get the, the awards per conversation, uh, convocation. Uh, during the final stage, this is again before the YWA, you need to carefully monitor their final thesis, guide them. Maybe you, if your faculty do not have mock viva, you yourself need to arrange with the student. Do not do one mock viva, do many mock viva. In fact, my one of my students last time, I forced her into like having five times of mock viva. The first batch with among them then i asked my colleague to be one to to, to do more by change changed um, or uh, improve the slide improve the presentation style and i noticed during the mock baba you realize students are very what do you call that eh? the, the comment is almost consistent when i become the panel of mock baba so the student is like presenting uh reading the slide so i will comment mainly like please, you spend three years, you spend four years doing this research, please show that you are in control of the title of your thesis, not the slide in control of you. Show that you are eager to share the finding. Then only the examiner will be excited to listen. If you are too serious in uh, your in reading the slide, I don't think that is a good thing. So guide them up to this point because when they submit, Oh, and until or unless they get their 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 viva done, then only your job is almost completed. Yeah, even that actually there is more, one more step. Actually, when they graduate, you still have to show that you're interested to know where are they moving to. If they are not your IT staff or they are lecturer from other faculty, uh, universities, do have a close contact with them. If they don't have any, apa, uh, job, come uh, offered yet just actually show that these are the potential place that you may go so the reason being um actually we need this because the moment they go to other organization so it's going to be like you develop networking for your itm with your supervisors that is very crucial for your itm because having networking is not easy if you do not know the person okay so uh, after working with the student for many years, so that there is a strong reason for you to develop or keep working with your student. So these are actually the issues normally faced by student loneliness, not enjoying the topic, maybe because the topic even by the supervisor, no, by right is the topic is actually um, uh, from their heart, from the student's uh, interest, it shouldn't be like not enjoying the topic not knowing what is expected. That's why the role of us as supervisor to explain what is expected after this, where are you going on? Of course, students also facing many practical issues like money, family, okay, uh, ethical issues, stress, do not mention. But I, I realized I, I got this from a study where graduate student happiness and well-being report released by University of California found that 50% of PhD student uh, actually uh, can be considered as having problem of depression. I hope this figure is not actually uh, uh, applicable to your ITM or our past class before student. So 50% having depression among PhD student is actually an alarming. So this is where we as a supervisor should actually help the student, of course, it is something that is difficult. We, we, we from the student, PhD is not something easy, it's very difficult, but there is a way for you to enjoy the journey. So what do the supervisor need from a supervisor? Actually, they need our trust, okay? They need us to respect them. We have to be available for them. We have to monitor and guide them. This is what they expect. I think this study I got from a book and this is true. So we have to show these five elements, four elements 
to make the student actually uh, enjoy or in a good relationship with the supervisor. Okay, so basically I can um, split how we train the student into three stages. Early stage, middle stage, and expert stage. In the early stage, normally we realize that our students are confident. Uh, they do not know how to get articles, what more to present to lecturers or supervisors, that kind of um, uh, competency. So this is where we have to put in our role, train them, let them meet people when we have visiting professor come into our PTJ, for example, bring in your student to be with all these professors when you have meeting and informal meeting with whoever of high level, make the student join in so that they are, they can develop that skill or and competency. So during the second or middle stage, this is where the student have actually collected the data. Now is more time for you to develop the skill by asking them to present paper, to publish paper, to, to manage their junior. For example, every month you are going to have session with the new intake. So as this middle, uh, we say the semi-senior student to guide the student on how to extract data from uh, database, how to analyze data. So by doing that, they are actually training themselves how to be a leader later because they have done the process of data collection, for example. It's just like they share their experience to the uh, younger one. So uh, in the final stage, when they finish their PhD, of course, they must like uh, be a person that able to actually conduct training by themselves, conduct their own research without guidance. So basically responsibility of supervisor, if you can continue, you need to discuss the research area with the student, ensure the student understand the university's code and standard. Yeah, I was surprised when actually I noticed students actually enroll, um, they have been like in the middle of the way, uh, middle of the PhD journey, but they just realized that um, uh, what we call it, they, they never imagined how this is look like because when they embark into PhD, we keep asking them to find article, get article, read article, get article, read article. Then, then they overlook that they have to see how actually at the end of the day, how this is going to like how you item thesis, for example, how thick is the thesis? Uh, how thick is the thesis? They, they never expose themselves into a real thesis from that institution. I believe when you when they first enroll, also you, you you show them this is what we expect from you after three years. Okay, and of course, a thesis are all available in the database if you go to progress. Since they have to write a thesis, it's good for them to see how thesis is going to uh, look like apart from they have to read uh, articles from journal. Okay, so more responsibilities of supervisors assist the student in the planning and implement implementation of research program, encourage the student to participate in activities uh, again, last one here, remind students on important issues such as plagiarism. I think, uh, yeah, Turnitin can tell whether uh, the student actually have having a lot of uh, plagiarism using the Turnitin, I think. So we as a supervisor should remind them. So remember, um, when we have student in front of us, when we are given a student in front of us, if we assign one student to, be, to, to do PhD under our supervision, we embed in our mind that one day, this student must be able to conduct his or her own research and, after, and at the same time supervise another student doing PhD under his or her supervision. So we have to train this person to be up to that 
competent uh, uh, up to the level. So those are the process of training I mentioned just now, the early stage, middle stage and final stage. Okay. So having to write for the student is a wrong thing and I think none of us is doing that and none of us have time anyway to, re uh, to write for our student. So I mentioned just now we are lecturer and of course in UITM our teaching hours is a lot. I cannot deny that and our activities are because we have a lot of students. Okay, and as a mother, as a daughter-in-law, as a sister, so our commitment is uh, never end. And of course, we can give excuse if you want, but we have life has to go on. If we are looking for success, these are actually the life success tips for the first tips. A winner is somebody that may wake up every morning, pushes themselves out of the bed and does the work to become a better person. If we keep giving reason, we have to attend meeting, we have to do, do that, to do this. So we'll never start doing something new. So if you are, interest, if you are interested in doing things, I think we, we can always find time spending, uh, find time to do what we want to do. So 99% of all failure come from people who have a habit of making excuses. So I remember my boss last time, Pronoma. Pronoma always said that I don't listen to reason. I don't listen to excuses. Those who listen to reason, those who listen to excuses are a weak person. You need notice that when the students say, oh, I cannot do this, I cannot come because I have parents say I have my kids. Uh, cannot go to kindergarten because of the kindergarten. We listen to reason and we, okay, okay, but you do your work right, then we become weak person. We tolerate too much. Unless we, if we tolerate, they can produce the result, that would be okay. Otherwise, I think we shouldn't tolerate too much. You have control over only three things in your life, your thought, image, and now what you want to do is you have to visualize. When you have student in front of you, you have to visualize that the student is going to graduate one day. Then only we, together with the student, we work very hard to make them graduate. So visualize what will happen to the student. Okay. So again, uh, more success, um, the success indicator of a person. So we have to read every day. So I make, I make myself promise, at least I read one chapter of any book, it can be motivational book, any book, including the academic, one book a day. But at least I would say 10 pages per day, it would be enough if, I mean, if you complain that you have a lot of uh, other commitment, but reading is a must. And, uh, the, uh, the list is actually reading the student thesis at least. Now, if you are a success people, we don't talk about people, but we talk about ideas. Yeah? Sometimes you notice that when we meet people, you talk about, oh, that people is not good, the other people is good, not bad. Everyone is not good in our eyes. But if we are a success people, it's, uh, we don't actually talk about people, we talk about ideas. So I like this, that's why I share with you. Accept responsibility for their failure. So if something is not right, uh, if something is not right, what happened? We don't blame others. Oh, I, I don't get promoted because uh, that uh, my boss never promote me. I don't get this because I keep give it, blaming others. None of the problem is because of us. So avoid that. So take the responsibility if it is if your failure is because of us. If it's a success, is because of us and eh? Uh, are the people surrounding us. So if we are a successful per person, we want to see other people to success. If you have that kind of feeling that you don't like to, to see people success, meaning you are, there's something is not right with you. So we have to celebrate other people success. So try to do that. that this is actually uh, a reminder uh, for myself. Okay. So keep in uh, things to do list, okay? So that at the end of the day, oh, we have 
uh, in the things to do list, we have three items. Item number one is to read chapter one of this student. Item number two is we have that checklist so that oh, once we finish, we return back to the student, we take, we feel like, wow, what achievement you have done because you have reached that, uh, you have reached the task of complete the one KPI for the day, for example. Okay, those are uh, element, element of uh, criteria or characteristic of success people. So we try to embrace this and be one. This is not only for, I mean, when I say this is actually is meant for me. So this is opposite of success just now. These are criteria or habit of unsuccessful people. So please avoid this. Never set go never set goals. Have a sense of entitlement. Blame others. These are all opposite of what my earlier uh, slide. Criticize, yeah. Uh, criticize is very easy, right? Then um, at Ari actually I have to share some experience in Ari. Our rule is if we cannot actually suggest to the students, uh, suggest improvement for the thesis or theory or the proposal of the student, please do not criticize. We only allowed to speak up if, if we need, we realize the proposal or the student's thesis are not good and we provide solution on how to improve it. If we do not have ideas or knowledge on how to improve it. We are actually asked to, we are asked to shut up. So when we are invited to be panel uh, assessor of student thesis, so that is the rule. Read, understand the thesis or the proposal, find ways to improve it. If you cannot find ways to improve it, do not criticize the thesis. So I think that is a good point that I'm going to pick. Try to help if you cannot find better way of uh, or better suggestion, you may we might as well. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> okay, basically, I think all of us knows this, especially those who did their PhD here in UITM. I got this from uh Ipsis uh, uh, website for master student. Uh, we are given I every mean, the students are given two years to complete whereas for this is only for except for architecture medicine dentistry yeah, the rest they have two years and for phd are uh, four years this is actually uh, a, a, a standard of our program and for re actually we only offer got so to get got this is what you need to do you make sure the student, if PhD, yeah, for PhD, you make sure the student able to do DRP within 12 months. In fact, at RE, we do it within nine months. During the ninth month, they have to present their DRP. And of course, they have to complete the whole PhD process within 30 months so that they can submit and get their Senate approval within 48 months. Okay. That is for PhD and of course for master they have two years. Uh, these are the situation after the uh, if they expect to get their PhD with the GOT period. Okay, now the new expectation from IPSIS is to have one paper uh, for PhD yeah? to have two two uh, publication uh, at least one in uh, one only publish one maybe. Uh, accepted for publication. So that is the new rules then um, and actually it's not very difficult because uh, they don't say actually scopus and yeah? two index publication it can be in scopus, it can be in era, it can be in uh, WS. So it's very flexible actually. Okay, this is what happened after you submit, after our students submit the thesis. Actually, most of us are not into this uh, admin work, uh, but we know that average time to take is within two and a half months. If your student is not able to get their viva within uh, 
two and a half months after the submission, maybe you can have, you can actually push or you can do some follow up so that uh, in case of something happen, we can actually um, correct the situation. Because I remember there's complaint by student, they have to wait one year to get their one year after submission to get into Viva. The reason being supervisors, uh, 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 no, the, the reason being examiners was like not able to be contacted. Then I think this is our role as supervisors to do the follow up with the postgraduate department of our PTJ to see what is the progress. I, I have to share my, uh, I would say my, uh, I don't want to boost up, but in at Ari we make it within we, in our email or letter to examiner we mention the date of viva. So, for example, if we submit, uh, we send out the thesis and the letter on the first of January, for example, we will uh, remind the examiners to return back the report within very short period, four weeks. Within two weeks after the submission, we remind them. And I think if it happened to your student, not being able to, or not being called for Viva within two and a half months, you have to play your role as supervisor because you know your student better. You don't want the student to suffer. After one year, I think data is going to be audited and difficult to justify and I'm scared if the examiner will say add more literature, li more add more li recent literature, add more data because your data is outdated. So play a role here even though um, the student has submitted the thesis. Okay, this is expectation. In ARI, we have to inform the student they have to graduate within three years. Year one, what they have to do, they have to complete the DRP, they have to finish module one, two. Module one, two is right out of chapter one and chapter two. And chapter three is the methodology. They have to do that within year one. And year two, they have complete the data collection and data analysis. And at this point, they have to present paper. And in year three, they have to complete data analysis and conclusion. And also at this point, they have to publish paper and present their mock uh, uh, viva. Uh, these are uh, the same itinerary, but I put I detail into semester just now by year. Then uh, this is actually do, uh, I always remind my student not to underestimate thesis because three years is GOT, but average time taken to finish PhD, this is actually, I take from report, eh? PhD doesn't take five to eight years to complete PhD, whereas for master, four to six years. And I think uh, I agree with this figure, but we have not actually done a proper study in, we are, at Ari, we have not done a proper study to get what exactly the average time to complete a PhD, but those are actually the data by uh, international data. So I would like to share some findings. This is my research. I In this research, actually, I examined the expectation gap between supervisor and supervisor. So I noticed that, uh, yeah, maybe I should share. There are 51 supervisors involved in this study and 51 supervisors. So I use matching method, uh, matching sample. Matching meaning, if I were to have five supervisors, I have to fill in the questionnaire five times for student A, B, C, and D. Whereas the student, they have to fill for, if they have two supervisors, they have to fill in twice, okay? So um, basically, we have 51 supervisors uh, response and supervisors. Okay, uh, I noticed that uh, this one, I, I just want to share this, okay? Uh, I want to see what is the expectation of supervisors and supervisors. So for the supervisor, for example, item number one, we ask them, whether supervisor is easily accessible. The supervisor say, the, this is the mean score, eh? lima is the best. Empat is okay, tiga is neutral, satu is very bad, okay? So four meaning is not bad. Okay, supervisor are easily accessible. And when you ask supervisor, what do you think of your supervisor? They are, is, it, is the your supervisor is easily accessible? You see here, 
the uh, supervisor say they are easily accessible the mean score 4.5 4.5 whereas the student says yeah the student is easily accessible but the mean score cuma 4.07 and this is when we run the test this mean different the means different between these two groups are significant meaning there is expectation gap between supervisor and supervisee the supervisor said they are very easily accessible whereas supervisor say yeah they are accessible because the mark is 4.5 is quite high but there is slightly a gap between the two groups expectation and number two another point is um supervisor schedule accommodate the demand of supervision the student said 3.8 which is not very good but the supervisor they say 4.4 meaning the supervisor feel that they are able to accommodate the students demand but to the supervisors they are uh, we are not so again try to understand student next time normally when we always say yes to our student you want to see me uh, can i see you so, yes we thought we already able to accommodate but at this uh, looking at this finding there is a gap actually okay uh, the, this one just now i do not highlight these two points because there is no gap meaning there is no expectation gap between supervisors supervisor. but the rest here these are actually there is expectation gap between supervisor and supervisee. For example, the student says that we are not available to discuss academic issues. The student says that uh, it's not, uh, there is a gap between the two groups. Eh? Supervisor provide guideline. They don't, we feel that we provide guideline, but the student says that, yeah, we supervisor provide a guideline, but not as they expect because the mark, the score is impact much lower than the supervisor's point of view the same goes to item the supervisor's the supervisor's score is very low whereas supervisor's one is high meaning we feel that we provide enough guidance on the proposal but the student feel not that good because there is um, a significant difference between these two groups the same goes to this supervisor provide constructive feedback the student says yeah but only 3.8 but the supervisor say yes 4.4 so again for at here at this point what i want to highlight is the student need more from us okay the student need more from us now we have to show our commitment uh the good part here when we ask supervisor this level of satisfaction okay 20 students say they like us very much 24 they like but looking at this figure they just opposite line um supervisor that very happy tiger satisfied only 42. what i want to highlight here is actually this one you like the number of dislike dissatisfied two supervisors dislike two supervisors dislike that's why i said the feeling is mutual i truly believe this two coming from the same two so if you do not like, do not like your supervisors, I believe supervisors also. Uh, if you do not like to see your supervisors, supervisors also having that same feeling. So we might as well show that well, we are excited to meet them. We are excited to have lunch or eat with them, to have coffee with them, to talk with them, so that uh, the relationship is going to be positive. I think, uh, yeah, I would like to share with you actually this study. We have we, I, we conducted this study in 2010 10 years back the situation might be different so you are welcome to carry out the same studies take our respondent Ani, uh, take our sam uh, method questionnaire ask your student see whether there is gap or not uh, maybe this i just share some of the questionnaire you can ask see whether supervisor may take this supervisor take this then there is a gap between the expectation of these two so uh, these are the questionnaire. Eh? Then I would like to share some actually um, journey of uh, PhD supervision at ARI. So at ARI we are very close with the student. Uh, what happened? Uh, we, we uh, I don't believe and uh, I supervise my own students. Sometimes I have to 
ask my student to see the rest of the uh, supervisors at ARI because I need them to be more open to get more knowledge because I myself are not uh, having that kind of uh, perfect knowledge. So they have to see if, when, when it comes to theory, they meet someone else. When it comes to methodology, I would like to introduce Dr. Intan. He, she's so good in methodology. So I will ask my students. So we actually do not supervise one student. We supervise everyone's student. In ARI. So this actually we have uh, dinner with the student, so group of supervisor and supervisee. And also here, actually this is my house when they come and you have uh, Makan, and here we meet student at the many places, and we ask the student because at Ari we conduct a lot of training conference. We make them participate. We make them present. This uh our DRP I think so one person DRP the rest will provide support. This one oh yeah maybe I should tell you actually uh the good part of our GOT program we do not entertain one person but we to them in group. We enroll them in a group. We call it GOT1, GOT2, GA3, GA4. Now we have GOT4 is going to register next week. They are in a group of 10 people. So what happened? We train them in a group of 10 people. These are in one batch. So they are in batch. This one in it, bo both batch, batch one and batch two. Batch one and batch two. So, so their PhD journey is not a uh, uh, lonely journey because they have a group of 10 people each. So group one, 10 people, group two, 10 people, group, group three, I think having problem because of COVID last semester. So only four, but group four is going to be 10 again. So they can actually, the good part about this is actually they compete among each other, compete in a positive way. So they share knowledge. So they actually finish their uh, progress uh, by helping each other. Uh, this one is group one from Yogyakarta, multiple or various university in Yogyakarta. Okay, some from Gajah Mada, one from uh, apa yang panggil? Yeah, many universities actually. So these are group two, group two, the whole group here from Universitas Indonesia. That's why I said PhD is not a lonely journey because they do it together. One person. Um, having problem or depressed, the rest nine will risk rescue. So they are enjoying the uh, journey. So uh, these are actually workshop and continuous workshop we have uh, by group. And also we have not only academic activities, the non-academic, we have Hari Raya gathering. So, and we force them from, apa, from Bangladesh to wear baju Melayu from Iran. So these are the module that we run to make them actually finish the PhD uh, during the same time. Because we, what, what happened, we keep telling the student, I want you all to, we want you all to convo during the same time. So the 10 people in, from the same batch um, getting their scroll at the same time. So they have to push each other, pull each other to finish uh, within the time frame. I think these are more of our uh, photo of our sharing session. So we invite Dr. Imbarin, uh, Professor Imbarin. Professor Imbarin is well known in IPSIS, in UITM, producing very good uh, student, younger student. So we keep asking, and he's now of one of our fellow to motivate our student, to motivate our supervisors to, to guide the students so that the student can finish within three years. So these are among the photos. Uh, the program, uh, Dr. Ramesh is one of our fellow. Uh, when it comes to presentation skill, pro, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Ramesh is very particular. And I think we have, uh, we enjoy the, the program with the student. And this is one of our students, uh, Darussalam. And this is a funny guy. You know why? Because, because he's so, he, he did his PhD halfway through in Netherlands because when he, we discover, when he discovered that he cannot actually cope with the working alone from the beginning, doing PhD, he, he joined Ari. When he joined Ari, was, he got surprised when he got like shocked when we entertain the student, it's just like we entertain our, our what you call it, friends. 
we, there is no trap, they are our friends. At the same time, we are serious when it comes to work. So he promote a lot of students. I think he bring in a lot of international students to ARI. Uh, this are among our module. So uh, again, this is our youngest PhD student in Malay, in UITM, right? We invite Aziz, I think his name is Aziz, to share how he finished his PhD within, I think, very short. So we learn from Imbarin, the supervisor, and we learn from supervisee how to make things happen, how to make GOT happen. Okay, PhD journey is actually difficult. So we as a supervisor, we need to help our students to reach at this point without problem. Okay, you can do it, we can do it. Okay, with that, I end my session and um, I believe if you are interested in the PowerPoint, you can ask from Ipsis. Actually, I'll, I'm not the best to present on this, but uh, when I'm invited by Ipsis, I say I'll try my best. Uh, this is what I can deliver. And if there is something is not right with my presentation, it is because of my weaknesses. And I ask you, uh, 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 I ask for an apology for that. And with that, I think I enjoyed this sharing session with you. I really hope it um, benefit you, if not a lot, a little bit at least. Okay, then. Thank you very much, Prof. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions from the participant? Very good presentation from uh, Prof. Uh, Jamalia. Yeah, so are there, are there so is there any question from the participant? Boleh buka your mic, ya? Yeah? Okay, uh, ada soalan, Prof. Daripada Dr. Kuldeep Singh. Uh, Prof, in your opinion, does a good researcher uh, yeah, make a good supervisor? Prof. Yamalia, ada soalan? Ya. Yeah. Does a good researcher make a good supervisor? Oh, mungkin Prof. Jamalah tak dengar kot. Sekejap eh. Okay, mungkin dia ada uh, mungkin Prof Jamal ada speaker problem. Ya ya. Okay, uh, rasanya Prof Jamalia ada masalah speaker eh. <coughs> so nanti uh, nanti Prof Jamalia akan jawab soalan tu sekejap ya. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I missed one of the question. That's a good researcher, uh, be a good supervisor. I, yeah, I believe yes. If you are a good researcher, you can, you can eh. But that's not necessary. You can be a good supervisor. 
but your knowledge, your academic knowledge must be uh, supplement with the, what you call it, positive attitude to the student. Being having, we always realize that smart student, not necessarily a good student. Smart in academic, but not able to communicate or not able to uh, lead a team. So the same goes like supervisor. If you're good in doing research, we can be a good supervisor, but it can only happen if we equip ourselves with more positive attitude toward the student. So the, the feeling of uh, wanting to help, the feeling of understand, understanding their problem, it will actually uh, complement to our aim to be an ideal supervisor or good supervisor. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Prof. Uh, ada ada soalan lagi tak? Boleh boleh tolong uh, typekan kat situ. Okay. Ada seorang daripada Dr. Nolina Muhammad No. Thank you very much, Prof, for sharing your knowledge and experience. Just nak tanya kalau ada set question yang Prof boleh guna untuk supervisor itu macam mana? Okay. Ada soalan kedua tu. Prof Jamalia ada uh, dah ada emailkan kepada uh, sekretariat untuk um, PowerPoint. Nanti saya akan sharekan kepada semua nanti ya. Okey, so saya rasa ada ada problem dengan speaker uh, masalah uh, ni. So I think um, any question you can directly um, send to Prof Jamalia. Okey. So thank you very much to everybody for Uh, participating in this uh, webinar series. So ini adalah yang terakhir for for this um, open. So the next one insyaAllah kita akan adakan untuk yang yeah, the Viva session and as well for the uh, moderating of the Viva session which is cover for the uh, uh, pengurusi, for the chairman of the Viva sessions. Yeah. So thank you very much everybody. Bye-bye.